To predict the NMR spectrum of a molecule, you'll need to figure out if all of the hydrogens or which hydrogens are equivalent to each other in terms of the environment in which they're found. So I'm going to draw you cyclohexane and we'll take a look at all of the H's. Now you probably realize cyclohexane is a very symmetrical molecule and at room temperature it turns out that all of these H's are equivalent at least when it comes to the NMR. If you are curious what it looks like, I'm just gonna draw this. This will be my PPM scale. We'll probably have something at zero if you use TMS as your standard. At room temperature, I don't know, 295 Kelvin or so, you're gonna get a single sharp peak right here because all 12 of those hydrogens are in the same type of environment. It ends up being at about 1.4 ppm on the example that I had. Now, the only thing you might be thinking of is the conformers of this. If you've done any organic chemistry at all, you probably know that there are different conformations or ways that this ring can bend. You'll remember that there are some axial hydrogens and some equatorial hydrogens. And this matters because it, I mean, it's, it's caused by the fact that um, hyd like all of these atoms are repelling each other. Sorry, I'm trying to speak and draw a chair conformation at the same time. The point is that there are six equatorials and six axials at any particular time. And at room temperature, they're flipping back and forth. So you end up with one sharp peak that actually represents the average of the two. If you go down to, what reference do I have here? 203 Kelvin. That's slow enough to make it that an NMR spectrum can actually show you the difference between the two. In fact, if you do the NMR spectrum cyclohexane at a low temperature, you're gonna get one peak for the axial hydrogens at say 1.1, and another one for the equatorial hydrogens uh, at 1.6. So you can tell that this 1.4 ended up being about the average. I've rounded these a little bit. But the idea is that NMR is measuring the environment that each hydrogen is in, and at a cold enough temperature where the molecule is in a position for just long enough that an NMR can see it distinctly, the, the axials and the equatorials end up being separate and distinct from each other because of the electron repulsion. What's happening here at a higher temperature is that the conformation is flipping so quickly that on the scale of NMR, you end up seeing an average between the two. Cool. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.